There we go. So, welcome to What If Season 1, Episode 1, Thoughts. So, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by New Rockstar, Screen Rant, Nerdist, CBR, Screen Crush, Black Nerd Comedy, and IGN. So if this is the first of these videos that by me that you watch, just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie, although I, may, I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2, and I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows, including this one. Now, let's see, so I've, I've had some issues with the pacing of WandaVision, okay, I didn't personally have a lot of issues with WandaVision's pacing, but I know other people did. I can't believe I'm blanking on it, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, and Loki. I have to say, this episode might be the first MCU show where I really didn't have any issues with the pacing. It never felt slow. It never like just it, it was never just people people talking for example or you know the, the plot was always moving and yeah so here's hoping that this will be the, that that this will be a, a consistent thing that this show will just have great pacing. I really love the the show's intro. Very cool. I don't mean the the intro to this specific episode. I mean the the overall show. It seems like it's going to be the the one they're going to use. Although the one to the episode is good as well. Given how many people freaked out about Captain Marvel character and solo movie alike. I can imagine this will also have some people losing it. And Peggy is like, no, I prefer to stay in this franchise, I mean. And literally not a single person objected. And no, I don't think that contradicts what I just said before. Not everybody wants to see her kick ass, but everyone wants her in the franchise. I like that this time Peggy did shoot the spy, you know, the in, in the... In the movie, Captain America 1, she would have gotten him, but, you know, she wouldn't have been able to get out of the way of the car in time. So, you know, but but here, yeah. Oh no, Steve was shot in the... <laughs> Good thing it didn't hit any part of his body that has blood. Look, I get it, it's PG-13, you can't show that kind of thing. So just don't show his entire upper body completely unharmed. Just like show his face, show him collapsing, and then film him from an angle so we can't see that there's no blood. As it is, it just looks like the bullet made him really sleepy. And Steve is too wounded to go into the machine, so Peggy takes his place. I see she managed to get her shirt off. Really cool that now the transformation has all this fire and smoke in the background. You know, it's like, I mean, if you're going to animate... Have some fun with it. You can you can essentially animate whatever you want. So, you know, go nuts. Really loving the references. The you know they talk about the dancing. And maybe you haven't found the right partner. You know, and and Peggy doesn't go on a USO show show tour like Steve did at first. Not loving that some of the faces being borderline perfect recreations and others being kind of cartoony like Red Skull's evil smile. I kind of feel like they should have just picked one and stuck with it. I would have been happy with either choice, but this middle thing, middle ground thing feels really awkward. Like, seriously, go back and watch, like, Peggy, it's, it's spot on. She looks exactly like Haley Atwell. But then when you first see Red Skull, he's got this really ridiculous smile that just, yeah... Let's see. Excellent action. I really like that the action scenes are so far alternatives to the stuff we see in the movie. Instead of the captain riding a motorcycle to the camp and then, you know, fighting inside, she, like, she's driving around inside it, running into soldiers and such. And her flipping over that car is epic. And some people joke that she is just as eager to throw away perfectly functioning motorcycles as Steve Rogers was, and 
yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe someone working at Marvel just really hates functioning motorcycles because they do get beat up a lot in in this franchise. It is they are they are used as blunt instruments quite a lot. Why did they redo the bit from the movie where the captain shoots towards the camera and we don't see what they're shooting at? It was frustrating before, it's frustrating now. For like a second, I thought, oh, maybe this time they're going to show what they're shooting at, but nope. And we do indeed get like a montage of action. I, I get it, the episode's, what, 30 minutes if you don't count the end credits? Probably less, actually. They, they don't have time to make everything a big action scene. I just, I still feel like they should just... I would rather have them just say, well, we did the thing, but we, you know, and have it be off screen instead of just putting a bunch of stuff into a montage, like, you know, a montage, you could do it in like a trailer or if it's a, yeah, but not in a, not in a movie and not in a, like, we're not going to get more of Captain Carter. Like, if Captain Carter reappears in the 40s, it's, there's going to be, like, time travel involved. It's not going to be organic anymore. Not saying I'm against it, just... So, you know, this, this, is, the, this is the only time we're organically going to get Captain Carter in the 1940s in action scenes. And given that that's the case, I just don't think they should do montages of action scenes. I knew I was gonna from the trailers, but I really love Steve in the mech suit, and the look fits the period. Like, they found a good, you know, some people said that it it really reminded them of Ironmonger. I can see that, because he's tiny in the suit. Others have compared it more to Tony's Mark I suit. That, I have to admit, that was the first thing I thought of for, for as an Iron Man reference, but Ironmonger does make a lot of sense, especially with how utterly destructive like ironmonger had like a gatling gun and steve has you know the the tesseract powering a cannon captain carter jumped off a plane holy crap that was incredible the the entire long take you know she's she's in the plane she's like didn't she throw at least one guy out of the plane and then she just go you know goes onto the the what's it called the the back part and then she just jumps off and lands on another plane and then jumps off and then steve you know is there with the yeah so almost everyone who played a role in captain america one the actual movie does the voice for the character in this but a lot of them are very hit and miss i like that the episode isn't shying away from this whole thing of a lot of men back then having trouble accepting a woman being a hero with superpowers. But it's pretty silly to have Steve compare him being skinny to her being a woman. Women have substantially more problems getting respect than skinny men do. Bucky almost fell off the train, but Captain Carter grabbed him by the arm. And he even says, you almost, what was it, you almost broke my, you almost ripped my arm off, something like that. And, you know, given that by the end of the episode, having her reappear in present day, this means that maybe there is no Winter Soldier in this universe. Although I saw one person say, you know, maybe Steve Rogers will be the Winter Soldier, which could also be interesting for sure. Now, but but yeah, it's, it's a great, because when you see Bucky almost fall off the train, if you look like, I th is it the position? It's some, something like that, but it looks very very similar to when he actually falls off the train in the the in the movie itself and i you know others have pointed out steve you know in in this case steve doesn't have powers but he's still a good guy like he didn't like become an incel or something he's not whining you know he's he's still you know he's he said he just wants a chance to make a difference. He wants to be able to fight the war. And, you know, at first he's, you know, he accepts, well, you know, Carter got the, I mean, it's not like he just woke up one day and he was going to get the serum. He fought to earn that serum, you know, but, and, and so did Carter. She just didn't know that that was what she was building towards, but she's also been, you know, she's also been through the ringer, but yeah. 
Steve not getting, you know, we see him like doing physical therapy to, to recover from being shot. And he's not like whining about how bad he has it. He's, he's being empathetic towards her. And then once he gets the suit, you know, he, he's just as eager to, to help out in the war effort in a mech suit as he was back when he got the serum. The train was a trap. There was a bomb inside. Good twist. Now, instead of Bucky falling out of the train, it's Steve getting blown up in the train. I really like, you know, the... I haven't watched the Agent Carter one-shot or mini... Was it a miniseries? I guess it was... And anyway, Agent Carter, that property, I haven't watched. Apparently, the that guy Flynn was from there. And, you know, here he kind of takes over... Tommy Lee Jones's part, which, you know, judging by Tommy Lee Jones' performance in Men in Black 3, if he doesn't really want to come back, just just don't don't force him to come back because he does not put in a lot of effort into his act. And and I mean the guy is also like really, really old by now, so you know, let let him let, let him take it easy. It's it's he's given us enough. We have enough amazing performances by him. But, yeah, so, so Flynn, I, I, you know, I, I saw one reviewer say that his sexism was almost cartoonish. Maybe, yeah. I really liked, you know, he confronts Captain Carter and Howard Stark. He's like, Stark, I thought you th said that thing was indestructible. It is. I mean, it was. <clears throat> it Look, dude, it was indestructible right up until the moment it was destroyed. I mean, I already knew that Haley Atwell could give an excellent performance in live action, but evidently she can also do a great job as a voice actor in this role. And some people have said, you know, maybe she'll show up in live action. That could be super cool, because, yeah, if, if she's... She's she's she started playing the role ten years ago. So if she if she's still up for it, you know it's it's really physically grueling to be an MCU hero. But yeah, I I hope we, well I know we're gonna see more of her because they they were like we could bring back Peggy Carter. Holy crap, we're gonna you know there she's. It's it's a thing. She's gonna be a recurring character in the in what if. Now let's see. And yeah, Captain Carter and the Howling Commanders go to attack the castle. Come on, Howard, we might need someone to push the button. Just hope no one throws a knife on at it. There it is. Who needs a plan? I have a shield. And Red Skull opens a portal and a Lovecraftian horror comes through. And we can tell that he can't control it because it attacks him immediately. And the Howling Commandos put Steve back in the Hydra Stomper, get it running again, so he goes to hell. Show off. Well, yeah, but what she was showing up was Dopus. And the Howling Commandos can't stand the noise the creature makes, so Steve flies them off. And I guess, like, Peggy's super, superhuman ears can withstand it. And Steve is, you know, in the safety of the suit. Although, did he leave the safety? And anyway, you know, they basically, they gotta get, they have to get them out of there so that it comes down to just Carter and Steve. And, you know, Captain Carter, I mean, it's essentially sheer force of will. She just, like, pushes the thing back in, which, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, that's an image. Is that like a, like a, yeah, never mind. And yeah, Captain Carter disappears into the other dimension to stop the creature, and she and Steve agree when to dance, a great mirroring of the ending of the movie itself, with Captain Carter in Steve's place and vice versa. And she arrives on the other side of the portal at the start of Avengers 1, and, you know, it's even, like, Fury's like, ma'am, 
put down the sword the way he was sir put down the spear to, to Loki and she tells her it's been 70 years and she's like we won the war you know it's it's a she too is like in the movie you know the captain is upset at not being you know and not being able to be with the the yeah I thought they did a really great job with like the tone of the dialogue fitting the the tone of Captain America 1 and the setting of the 1940s like I would be surprised if there if every episode is going to be quite like this you know I saw one of the Easter egg people say that you know Bucky basically makes puns like he's Robin in what was it did they say the bat like the 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 Adam West show a anyway yeah you know it it is it's it's very similar to that you know based based on the trailer it certainly looks like the the one where T'Challa is Star Lord R.I.P. That that is going to that the the tone there is going to be closer to. The Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, so, yeah. I realized that in Captain America 1, Peggy was an important part of Steve's story. I do still think that it is frustrating that one of the first female-led MCU stories spent so much time on the woman's relationship to a man and a white one at that. I like how this changes a few things from Captain America the First Avenger, because a lot of them are very logical alternatives. Alternate, al yeah, alternate versions to what's in the movie. In the movie, Red Skull accidentally opens a portal into space using the Tesseract, and he's transported through it. In this episode, he intentionally opens the portal so that something else can travel through it. In the movie, Howard Stark briefly tests how powerful the Tesseract is with just a small piece of it. In this, he has the entire Tesseract and uses it to power a sort of prototype of... Yeah... And an Iron Man suit, the whether you want to go with the Mark I or the Iron Monger. The way that in the movie it was used to power large tanks and the main ship at the end. One of the Easter egg people said that he didn't feel like it made a lot of sense that Stark put the thing into one you know, this the, the this one mech suit in when when in the movie Red Skull builds an army, you know, there's a lot of tanks and troops that have Tesseract-powered weapons. I get what he means, but was Howard... Like, the way I see it, in the movie, Red Skull has been looking for the Tesseract for a while. He knows what it can do. And so does Zola. So Zola has been, you know, based on knowing what, it, what the parameters are, how much power it... Uh, puts out and and how you know the proper safety precautions and such he has been able to build this thing and make these factories that can mass produce it but howard it kind of fell into his lap well not literally because that would <laughs> then there would be no tony because that thing is very radioactive and and dangerous but he didn't expect it so he just kind of it's yeah, he, he put it in a, a thing. Besides, when Tony started building suits, he also kind of started small. To be fair, the very first, of course he's going to start small. He's stuck, you know, he, he was stuck in a cave with a box of scraps. But still, it was only gradually that he built his way up. To, like, the, the first suit he made that could fly didn't even have weapons if i were yeah no it didn't because that's why they had to put a bunch of weapons in it in iron man 2. at first it only had the the repulsor ray yeah you know he didn't start putting a lot of weapons into it until the mark 3. so i feel like we can we can give howard some some slack here but yeah I think it was Movie Bob who said that the the episode doesn't really say anything other than "Wow, this character is cool." You want to see more of her, right? That's kind of true. I I don't think that every episode of What If needs to do more than just say, "Wouldn't it be cool if?" I mean that it's the title, "What If," and then we see "What If." 
I do think they're going to get more interesting in, in later episodes. I think it was maybe also just, you know, I, I forget who it was, but someone said, we, you know, you don't have to force feed us all this information. Like the, you know, the watcher says that was the decision that changed everything. And the watcher reiterates the events of Captain America one. I agree that for us hardcore fans, we don't need, I, I could recite the first Captain America movie in my sleep, but I think it's to ease casual viewers into it. Like if, 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 like people who know almost nothing about the MCU and just saw, you know, ah, oh, that's just kind of some cool imagery in, in these trailers for what if, I guess we could try. And then they sit down, maybe they haven't watched Captain America 1 at all. Maybe they haven't watched it for years. It, movie's 10 years old, you know. You can't expect people to keep re-watching. I mean, I keep re-watching, but you can't expect everyone to do that. And, yeah, the, the bit, you know, so, so that explains why he reiterates. And then he points out, see, that's the moment that the decision... I think some casual viewers maybe otherwise would be watching, like, I don't understand why it's so different from the movie. It's so different from what the Watcher just told me the movie was like. You know, it, it, I could maybe see... I think if they... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little torn on whether I think it would be a good idea to keep that up or if they need to ease off on it in the future. I, I don't know exactly, but I think that was everything. So, so yeah. I know I say this every time, but really psyched about the future. Really looking forward to it. Okay, so there's going to be nine episodes in each season. You know, they, they started out saying there was going to be ten. I really hope that the two episodes they apparently cut were just like... I don't know. What if Dummy became Iron Man? And it's like... It's constantly having trouble like it was in the movie. I don't know. Anyway... Really loving it so far. I thought the, the animation really loved. I liked how it, yeah, just the, the, a lot of creative decisions that I thought made, made a lot of sense. And yeah, the, I think that is, yeah, that is everything I have to say for now. So, I forgot to put my sign off into this document, so it'll have to go, it'll have to just be the old one. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time. If I can maneuver my, I'll, I'll get there, yeah, let's, I can do, and here we go.